Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the CEO here at TIFF. Welcome to the 49th Toronto International Film Festival presented by Rogers. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's special event, Play the Part. Insights from Jia Zhengke and Raphael Manuel presented in partnership with Rolex. We'd like to thank our members and our donors and supporters for championing TIFF's mission to transform the way we see the world through film. If you're interested in becoming a member or donor, you can find more details at tiff.net slash support. Big thank you to our presenting sponsor, Rogers, and our major sponsors, RBC and Visa, for their ongoing support. And a sincere thank you to our government supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. And I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to audiences from around the world who are joining us online to watch this event on the Rolex and the TIFF YouTube channels. Welcome. You might be up late, depending on where you are. Uh, today's event is co-presented by the Rolex Perpetual Arts Initiative. And for more than half a century, Rolex has partnered with some of the world's most talented artists and leading cultural institutions to celebrate excellence and contribute to perpetuating artistic heritage, creating a link between the past, the present, and the future. And we're really proud to be uh, a host for this and to present this important arts initiative today. And we're glad that you're here with us as well. Rolex has maintained close ties with the world of cinema for many years, and in particular by pairing cinema legends and emerging talents through the Rolex mentoring program for talented young filmmakers. And those mentorships have evolved into enriching dialogues between artists of different generations, different cultures, different disciplines, where both rising talents and senior artists benefit from the interaction. The full benefits of these collaborations extend far into the future, as many of the emerging artists are already making a substantial impact on global culture. And, and I can say that having been a part of some of the deliberations uh, for the Rolex Mentor and Protege program that pairs artists, uh, artist mentors and protégés, I can say that Rolex, Rolex um, does this work at the most uh, high level and with the most thoughtful approach to bringing artists together. Today, it's our great honor to host two of the artists from the most recent cycle of the Rolex Mentoring Program. Before I bring them up on stage, though, I'd like to share a video with you that will introduce you to director Jia Zhengke and Raphael Manuel. So let's have a look at that video. Jia Zhengke is one of the most important, one of the most groundbreaking filmmakers of our time. Many of his films have screened here at the festival. And when we launched a new competitive section as part of our festival in 2015, director Jia kindly let us name that section after his feature film, Platform. He's joining us this year to present his latest film, Caught by the Tides, which premiered last night and will have its second public screening later tonight. Raphael Manuel is a filmmaker who's grounded his creations in the study of philosophy. He won the Silver Bear Jury Prize at the Berlin Film Festival for his short film, Filipiniana, which he is currently expanding into a feature. So please join me in welcoming director Jia Zhengke and Raphael Manuel. Oh, 
OK, I think we're good now. Welcome. Thank you both so much for being here for this very special initiative. Um, I want to uh, begin, or very shortly, uh, watch a, a brief video about your work and your collaboration. But I guess I, I want to just begin by asking you each, you've worked together for quite a while now, I think beginning during the pandemic. What has been the bond between you? How would you describe your connection now as artists? Should I say it? Please. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, how would they describe our bond as artists? I think um, when I first got to China, like the biggest thing was the language barrier between me and director Ja. But I found that it was bridged quite um, quite fast through the universal language of, well, obviously, I mean, cinema is one of those things. But beyond that, it's the more tangible everyday things like um, food. We both have shared this. Food is important. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I guess the easiest way to share cultures with each other. Mm -hmm. um, music as well. Director John loves music. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very into, into music. Not so much, I mean, I don't know so much about Chinese music, but from spending a lot of time with him, I, I, I'm starting to get introduced into this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just uh, everyday interactions wherein, uh, that we end up, that ends up creating our, uh, filling up our creative well and what, what people actually make cinema about, or what mm -hmm. filmmakers make cinema about. So this kind of like love for, for everything that is in cinema, that ends up becoming cinema. Mm -hmm. Director Ja, how would you describe your bond? Uh, Hello, 跟我有点像，然后当然肯定很爱电影。Good yeah. afternoon, everyone. Uh, the first time I met Raphael was via video conferencing. Uh, it was in the process of choosing my protege as part of the Rolex mentoring program, and I was interviewing Raphael for forty to fifty minutes, and it felt like talking to an old friend. Um, just looking at him, I could, I could tell that he loved food, he loved smoking, <laughs> and of course, he also loves film. Thank you both. Um, we do have a brief video about your collaboration, so let's have a look at that video, and then we'll come back and speak some more. I so tell them to run first and then when when it's flying to walk. Okay, still rolling? Still rolling. All right, so this again. Tatakbo tayo. Tatakbo. We're shooting my first feature film on a golf course. Imagine that you're on a like on a platform and they're a little like, a little bit below. I've been working on this project for 4 years and now luckily I have the opportunity to expand it and to evolve it into a, a full-length film. So I'm really excited about that. And director just coming to visit. We start with last shot, and then we have three more shots. Uh -oh. But the, in terms of the scene, it's the last shot. I asked him, do you have any small words of advice for me before the first day? Cut! Cut! I said, the film is a slow process. You have to create a sense of confidence for everyone. 100% center of confidence. Even because even if you have... Only in the relaxed and relaxed state, every worker can make the best 7.20 now, 7.30, we roll with that guy. He said that the first few days is for you to bridge the gap between your imagination and reality. I talked about it with my cinematographer. Mm. So we're adding a bit more movement in some other shots. Mm. Cut. Yeah. I like the result. 
this better. Yeah, yeah. better. Yeah. Said also, uh, uh, there are few experiences that I can say have been life changing, but like with all sincerity, this has been a life changing experience. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. I think that today is a good day. There's so many things that I was like, ah, I wish I did this better, I wish I did this better. <laughs> but then I remembered you saying, it's okay, don't be perfect first day. Yeah, just the first day. First day, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the scene, I will look at him while he's shooting. I see him talking to his staff, looking at him alone in the room. I believe that he's talking to his staff. 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 I want to go back uh, by asking about your two uh, backgrounds as artists, as filmmakers, and how you came together to, to create this uh, mentor and protege collaboration. Um, and I'll start with you, Director Jia. Uh, you attended the Film Academy in Beijing, the very famous Film Academy. Um, and you made your first feature film upon graduating called uh, Pickpocket. And you know, we have some film students in the audience today, so I want to ask you to go back to that time as you were just graduating from university yourself, from film school yourself. And were there things that you learned uh, that were really important that you took away from your time at the academy and that you put into your first feature, Pickpocket? <coughs> well. 对，说到最初拍电影，我是一九九七年在大学快毕业的时候，呃，准备拍《小五》这部长片。那但我觉得，嗯，今天想起来，呃，经常有人问我说，如果你回到那个时候，你会，呃，就是今天的我回到那个时候会怎么样？我说，那回到那个时候跟过去没什么变化，一样的，因为啊、呃，大家都刚刚呃学习完，没什么资源。在行业里也不知道怎么开始工作，情况都是一样的。但是我觉得那个时候，呃，我看了一本书，那本书是呃介绍法斯宾德的。那本书其实是一本写制作预算的书，但是他的那个书的名字叫做《独立电影做法》，啊、呃，就是我被“独立”这两个字所吸引，啊、呃，因为我们一直。这个只就所有人都知道，电影是一个团队作战，呃，那你需那么多人聚集在一起，需要资金，需要很多人帮助，很多资源的配合，才能开始拍电影。但是那个时候我就在想，那所谓独独立电影是不是意味着可以像一个游击队或者单兵作战？呃，那呃，我们总说我们没有资源，但是是不是我们自己也有一些资源呢？啊、呃，那最大的资源可能就是自己，啊、呃，你的热情，你的克服困难的这种毅力，啊、呃，那这些东西激励着我往前走啊，就是克服很多困难。所以，嗯，我想《小五》的开始是一个非常准备不充充分的电影。但是话说回来，如果一切条件都成熟，可能也不会有那部电影。在一个，在你想拍电影的那个年龄。啊、呃，你你自己呃，应该应该把那个年龄的状态，这个表现出来。所以这也是我从拉菲尔身上能看到的一种冲动，啊、呃，就是一种要把自己电影拍出来一种冲动，一直在为电影奔波。那、呃、我第一次见他，我也是这种感觉，就让我感觉看到二十多岁的我，啊、呃，我觉得我们身上都有这样一种啊。呃呃，这样一种习惯，就是在没有资源的时候，我们依靠自己，依靠朋友，依靠很小的团队，我们可以制作的电影。当我们有了很好的条件去制作电影的时候，呃，我们会很好的这个这个融入到一个群体，领导这个群体去工作。Yeah. Ah, sorry. This is Toronto, not Beijing. Sorry, sorry. Right. Uh, I began making films in 1997 at a time as I was at the cusp of graduation, and I made my first feature, Xiao Wu or Pickpocket. 
Um, and people always ask me if I went back in time, what would what what would I change? And the answer is probably nothing. Uh, we always say we don't have enough resources. Um, we don't have enough to make what we want to. However, we all start the same with very little, but we still try to take a leap forward. And uh, at the time, I was inspired by a book by Fassenberg. Um, Yes, the filmmaker, and it was a it was a book about how to make your own indie film. How to it was about budgeting, and I was mesmerized by that uh, film uh, by that book. Uh, for me, I learned that the industry of film requires a team. It requires funding. It requires crew. Like they say, it takes a village. But I also wondered, can I make a film, an indie film, just by myself? Can I find it in myself to um, make the project that I want to do? And the answer is yes. Uh, we have all the resources within us as well. We need passion. We need resilience to begin to take that difficult first step. So at the time when I made Xiao, I was not ready, not all of the, it wasn't a perfect storm. I didn't have all the resources, but maybe if I had, perhaps Xiao would not be the Xiao that it turned out to be. So everything was happening in real time. And then when I met Raphael, um, I could see that he had the commitment to making his own films to um bring to life his own vision. And he reminded me of myself uh, back when I was in my 20s. Um, and so no resources, that's fine. We still have to take a leap of faith. Thank you. Um, I'm especially interested that um, you took inspiration from Rainer Werner Fassbinder, not simply artistic inspiration, but practical things like budgeting as well. I think for any young filmmaker, that's so important to learn the practicalities of filmmaking as well as the artistic side. Um, Raphael, I want to ask you, because your background is quite different. Your formation is in philosophy and in visual communication. You ended up working in advertising for quite a while as well. How do you make that shift from what you were doing to filmmaking? Um, yeah, it's also a big jump from uh, studying philosophy and visual communications to advertising. I guess I forgot all the. That's true. That's yeah. also a shift. <laughs> yeah. I can um, maybe I can start there. It's like I basically forgot all the Hannah Arendt and Karl Marx that I learned in university and went <laughs> to work straight for the for for the industry. And um, and I mean to be fair. Yeah. I just graduated from university. I needed to feed myself. And I wasn't unhappy with the, the work. It was very creative work. And the people that you meet in, these, in this creative industry of advertising, they're all very good people that really want to do good work for their clients. And uh, so I wasn't unhappy with the work. I was, I guess, in some way, I was just not fully satisfied with my life then, um, in that it wasn't uh, exactly what I, I wanted to do. Not that I knew that filmmaking was exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that I did enjoy this whole medium of um, mass communication, of reaching a, a broad audience through, through a, a visual medium, an audio medium, a sonic medium as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, film felt like the next logical step in exploring where else I could grow from from the tools that I was developing while working in advertising. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I planned my escape after, uh, from advertising after two years working and I started saving up to go to film school and mm -hmm. I just took the leap because even though I didn't know if film was exactly what I wanted to do, it, 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 it excited me at the time and uh, I just followed my instincts. And then oh, okay. <laughs> um, we saw this clip from Filipiniana, the feature, yeah. right, which is um, not yet done. Uh, so you are the first audience to see images from this film, um, and it's quite striking. I was struck by the precision of the compositions, the, the pacing within each image, each shot as well. And um, I want to ask you a bit about that in terms of how you design your filmmaking. But I also want to ask director Ja, when you look at Raphael's work and you look at what he's done in Filipiniana, you were on set with him, uh, and you look at how he composes his images, what do you see in his work? 
uh, I, I guess the, um, the thing is for Filipiniano, we have been developing this language for this, uh, this cinematic language for about five years now with my, with my team, with my, my cinematographer, Sanya Patricia, and with my production designer, Tatiana Fani. So this is, uh, we, we wanted to develop a, both a, a visual and an audio language that gave uh, texture, color, sound to a kind of violence that we thought was very present in kind of everyday banal institutions that people just take for granted. Like, like for example, in a, in a golf course, right? When I introduced this project to audiences the first or to to even the industry, the first question I'm usually asked is why is it set on a on a golf course? Because usually when one thinks of the Philippines, a golf course isn't exactly the the first image that one thinks of. But to my mind, I think a golf course is a very good um, metaphor for my country in that it's a, a very large, very fertile plot of land that's toiled on and worked on by so many people, but ultimately enjoyed and profited from by only a select few. Um, is that the violence that you refer exactly, to when you yeah. talk about the violence of the golf course? Exactly, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, actually even going further into that violence, the first golf courses in my country were established on uh, uh, American military bases. So you can see the quite clearly the colonial roots between uh, golf courses and the Philippines. And uh, um, because a lot of cinema that comes out of my country comes from a certain aesthetic, a very realist, uh, hard um, aesthetic. And so I was very adamant that I kind of wanted to explore the same issues, but using a different kind of, uh, of language, a different kind of imagery, uh, reframing a little bit this violence that is present in my country. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I got this, uh, we, we started the, the jumping point for where we started to develop this visual language that you see. It's, thank you. It's yeah. interesting because it's both very beautiful and very unsettling at the same time. Director Zhao, when you look at Raphael's images in Filipiniana, hmm. what do you see? What strikes you? Uh, 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 然后看完之后我的感觉跟那个卡麦隆很像把它复杂的一个社会关系复杂的社会问题结构到了一个空间里它的背后这种结构能力给我留下非常深刻的印象。Before uh, uh, interviewing Raphael, I had watched his short Filipiniana that is now going to become a feature. And just like you said, Cameron, I um, noticed his precision, his um, excellent pacing. I believe that every society is complex and has its own issues, and Raphael is able to uh, treat these subjects uh, from his society uh, through character and space. Mm. 他有很多静态的摄影我说我其实突然明白我为什么很喜欢你的视觉
啊，那个那里面突然的一个微妙的动，就是一个就是挣脱的、解放的一个努力啊。我觉得他用那个安静跟突然之间的这种细细腻的动啊，用他的一个很稳定的平衡的构图啊，然然后再去打破它。呃，带来了一种电影这一个本源的一个力量，因为电影这个动态的活动影像本身，它就是一个对于对于一个传统二维视觉的一种反叛，一种一种自我的解放。虽然我们还是在二维里面，但是我们是可以动起来的。呃，我觉得这种是，我觉得是它背后。我一直没有搞清楚他为什么那么动人，但最近我觉得这是他动人一个理由。Um, I'd like to talk about Raphael's、um, still photography.、Uh, so usually his images are quite still. Um, however, there will be a sudden movement、um, of a character, and I believe that his framing is also extremely precise, almost like a piece of fine art. And only yesterday did I realize why is Raphael's work so impactful to me? Why is it so unsettling? Like we said, and I understood that it's because I truly love his visual composition.、Um, film to me is a Way to free ourselves from some of the shackles of 2D. We are liberated from, in a way, from the 2D world.、Um, Raphael uses a lot of contrasting elements, such as stillness、uh, versus movement, and using composition that is、uh, perfectly composed. But then he will break through that. So film, as we know, is motion picture. It's our way to rebel against the 2D,、um, and it's truly empowering. Because we are still in a 2D environment, however, we are、um, we are trying to create movement within that world. Thank you.、Um, I I'm very interested in this dialogue between your two styles of filmmaking and how you find things that resonate for each other.、Um, and one of the wonderful things about this collaboration, this mentor protege relationship. Is that you also got to visit director Jia in China when he was shooting Caught by the Tides?、Um, I believe we have a video、uh, from that visit as well. So I'd like to have a look at that and talk a little bit about what you observed and what you learned, Rafa, when you were visiting with director Jia in China. Let's have a look at that video. Filmmaker电影工作者是在这样的一个试图关系，很重要一个原因是当时我看到了他的一个短片。啊，他那么年轻，但是他电影语言的创造性给我留下了很深刻的印象。我觉得好像看到他看到三十年前的我。他好，班子。A good mentor for me is just generosity, which I think they're they're just under one mentor. Father Grady. Yeah. We change the color. The what? Yeah, it's、um, more more dark. Ah, okay. And actually, being able to go on set with director Jia, that was one of my high points. Everything is like very precise and very managed. I hope he can look at me in front and see some ways I do things. These ways are not right, but I think it will inspire him. It will make him know what kind of situation he's facing. I think this kind of work style he has to adapt to, because he hasn't made a short film. It's a huge crew. For me, it's something totally alien because it's a very big production. It's like a good sneak peek at what it's like at this level. My time with Jia gives me confidence. I'm leaving in a couple of days, and I'm going to the Philippines to begin pre-production for my first feature.、I'm、very excited to take what I've learned here, both consciously and subconsciously, into myself.
Raphael, I'm curious, you, you say in the video that when you visited the set of Caught by the Tides, it was a much bigger production than you were used to. Um, what was that like for you to, to compare your style of working previous to this to, to what you were seeing from director Ja? Uh, yeah, that's a, I guess that's a very good place to start. Um, yeah, I mean, besides the, the scale of the, the production, of the, the size of the team and the crew, it's also the fact that we were shooting in uh, like negative 11, negative 14. <laughs> like, uh, you don't have in the Philippines. 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, I live in, I'm based in Amsterdam now, and it still doesn't even get that cold there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It gets that cold here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, it was very intense, and it uh, shocked me. And, uh, but in a way, it was kind of meditative, this cold, and like putting my brain in this this flight or uh, fight uh, kind of mode and uh, I, I hoped or I felt at the time that I was more focused because of this cold. And okay. Yeah, um, it, was, it was really interesting because um, I guess in the, um, obviously director Zhao was in the middle of a, a production and, but he always found the time to give me access to every single aspect of, uh, of of his day-to-day -day production schedule, whether it's um, going to the prop room and checking each individual prop, mm -hmm. or like he has some scenes with like hundreds of extras, and he met every single one of those extras, like you know, the uh, before casting them, and so it's like these small touches that I, I I saw him give and the level of attention he gives, even despite the the scale, that I found very very uh, uh, inspiring to. To, for lack of a better word, um, yeah. Um, can I? I also like to talk about how it's it's it's. I only noticed it while watching this film. Now that uh, you know, right before I, I shot the film, I mean, obviously I was in China with director Ja, and this obviously has some effect on my film. But even before this, like with the short, like. Coming home from uh, on the flight home from London to Manila to pre uh, to begin pre-production for my short film, the film that I chose to watch on the on the airplane was a Jazanka film. Oh, yeah, okay. it was um, Ashes Pierce White. Okay, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, that was my introduction to Jazanka cinema. It's like you know, like a fourteen-inch screen <laughs> on the back of a. But I mean, right. it still works though. Yeah, it right? still works. It still works. It's still amazing. And uh, actually. If you see my short film, I think you can see some of the influences of, of Ashes Pierce White. And I mean, of course, right after I watched Ashes Pierce White, I watched every single Jazz and K film. Um, and then after, when the short film got into Berlinale, it just so happened that it was the, I think it was the 70th edition, and they were doing this um, series of talks called Transmission, where, ja, where director Ja was giving a talk. On transmission and you know passing down um, filmmaking skills from one generation to another, and I, I went to that talk, and then this this whole Rolex opportunity happened where they invited mm -hmm. you to apply, and it just so happened it was Jazanke uh, was the mentor. Really? <laughs> so just real that kind of yeah. strange coincidence, exactly. or maybe not a coincidence yeah. that you, that you were connected already. Yeah, yeah, huh? Um, Director Ja, I want to ask you about your approach to mentorship. Raphael mentions that you really opened up the whole filmmaking process to him on set, which is hard to do when you're fully focused on making your own film. But what is important to you about mentorship and why was this opportunity, the Rolex program, so unique for you? Uh, uh, Yan 不仅要一起学习
，呃，所以我觉得劳力士门徒计划它非常古典。<笑>就是，也就一下让我想到古代孔子那个年代的教育，呃，当然和一代一代的门，呃，这个工匠啊，这种各种行门呃行当的工匠也是这么教育的。那他又非常现代，因为我们是通过 Internet 全世界的挑选门徒，然后我挑到了一个菲律宾的年轻导演，呃，他他从我们从陌生人，呃，不同的国度，我们在一起工作。啊，所以他这个感觉是非常奇妙的。About the about the Rolex mentoring program, can you hear me? About the Rolex mentoring program, why did I accept to become a mentor?、Um, let me tell you a little bit first about、uh, Chinese classical education.、Um, it's very different than how it's done nowadays. Nowadays, we meet in the classroom, and then the teacher teaches. They leave, the student leaves, and there's no more interaction. However, back in the day, traditionally,、uh, to learn, there would be a process whereby the teacher and the proteges or students would learn, play, live together, and it's in these multi. Multiplicities of、uh, interactions that you would be able to digest the teachings because it would become tangible,、um, and thereby the theory would become crystallized in action. And therefore, to me, the Rolex mentoring program is quite、uh, Chinese classical in a way, almost、uh, like Confucius's teaching and this old model that we may all know of the master and the apprentice. On the other hand, it's also extremely modern because we. Met via video conferencing, I was able to peruse、uh, literally the entire world to finally choose my protege,、uh, this young Filipino filmmaker, promising. So that's why I chose to accept this program. 嗯，当然，从具体到跟拉斐尔的合作，我觉得，呃，我也想过很久，因为我觉得，嗯，那些电影的知识，或者说一些关于电影的观念，当然是我们应该去。就包括我电影的经验，当然是我应该，呃，去跟拉斐尔分享的，这是最起码的。但更重要的是什么呢？我后来觉得，更重要的是在我们相处这两年里面，我要让拉拉斐尔看到我的困难，看到我的弱点。然后，当然，我相信我一直在面对不同的困难，我在克服这些困难。我也有很多的弱点，我也在克服我自身的弱点。我希望拉斐尔能够看到，看到我在经历这些，因为因为这是每个电影导演都无法回避的问题。我们就是在解决不同的困难中进行创作的。呃，我我希望拉斐尔看到是一个充满矛盾、困难，然后想办法解决的一个一个导演，一个一个 mentor， 呃，而不是一个而不是一个虚假的人。啊、呃，那我。那我觉得拉斐尔跟我在这两年也是激励我，呃，克服我的面临那些困难啊，所以我我想让他看到每个作者都有这些问题，你要你要学会去面对，呃，那我觉得最大的一个克服就是疫情这两年其实拍电影是很难的，呃，就我们都居家，呃，交通很不方便，很不适合，呃，集体工作，但是我们。拍出了一部电影，啊，我们克服了这个困难。对，我觉得这是我想告诉他的。In my collaboration, maybe I should say. Okay. In my collaboration with Raphael, I did think long and hard on what to teach him, how to mentor, and of course, I would want to transmit、uh, my experience, my knowledge. These are things that goes without saying. However, most importantly, I also want Raphael to see my weaknesses and see me、uh, facing a wall and how to overcome obstacles.、Um, and I do face many obstacles. I have many weaknesses, but I always try to overcome them. Um, and I hope that Raphael can be witness to this process of struggle and then overcoming the fact that we can always create and within chaos and contradiction that after a struggle we can always come to a an outcome. And I wanted Raphael to see that I'm a real, living, and breathing human being with his 
share of issues. Um, but Raphael, throughout these two years, has motivated me to overcome my struggles even more earnestly. And in the end, it worked. We were able to both produce our films. And of course, the biggest difficulty was COVID. Um, we could not work together. Uh, we could not travel easily. However, in the end, it was uh, a good ending. Thank you. Um, I love that idea of showing weakness as the master filmmaker, showing struggle and showing overcoming. And Raphael, I wonder what you observed and how that made you reflect on your own practice as an artist, what you were able to see from the struggles that director Ja was overcoming. Um, yeah, like, like he said that, um, especially at the end of this video and just now, that um, it's not that he was very prescriptive with the mentorship that he was giving me. And um, that he wanted to just show me some of the, the, the challenges that, the, that you'd be faced doing your first feature film. Uh, for me, my first feature film, but doing a feature film. Every feature film is different. So in some ways, it's always doing another, a new one, right? a first one. And I felt that, uh, for example, um, with uh, Caught by the Tides, the fact that there were so many obstacles with uh, when uh, well, that I, I saw at least when making the film, the first uh, the first being of course it started off in COVID and we had to, but he didn't let that get in the way. We started making the film in the editing room where we were allowed to be under under uh, Chinese regulations, and uh, that's where he was generous enough to kind of walk me through the the personal and visual archive his immense, immense and beautiful archive of footage and sound that, that he's been collecting over the past 30 years. And um, people like to talk about how our critics and uh, audiences talk about how director Ja uh, is a master of blending documentary and fiction. And uh, I think even more so, you see that he lives it when, when you look at the, the, the archive that he does, that it's not something that he... he uh, Intentionally does it's just how what he captures, you know. Um, in terms of yeah, I like how how seeing him make this film from uh, post production. We started off with post production with editing, all the way to the shoot two years later, and all the obstacles that he went through, even at his level, even at after X amount of films and thirty years in of, of filmmaking of, of master filmmaking. That's, that was super, super generous of him. Um, I want to ask you, Director Jia, about the Pingyao Film Festival. This is a festival that you started. And from what I understand, you started it in part to highlight the work of young filmmakers like Raphael. Why was that an important focus for the Pingyao Film Festival for you? Uh. <laughs> 对，就是呃，在八年前创立了平遥国际电影展，最主要的一个原因是，呃，我觉得年轻人之间应该相互，年轻电影工工作者之间、电影工作者跟年轻的观众之间应该有相互交流的一个机会，呃，特别是中国的
，也是我第一次出国，第一次到欧洲，啊、呃，也是我第一次就是接触同龄的其他国家的导演，啊、呃，就是我觉得<咳>，我觉得就是电影节能够建立起来这样的一个一个一个管道跟平台，让陌生的电影人能够相遇。呃，我我始终难忘有一点，就是我在北京电影学院学习了四年，这个学院非常好，然后我每天都在看经典的电影，但是对当代电影其实是不了解的，因为没有什么更多的信息。那我们的学院有两本杂志，一本杂志是叫做叫做《电影手册》。就是法国的电影笔记，一本是英国的视语厅，但是对我来说，我不懂法文，也不懂英文，但是这两本书对我很重要，因为它有很多照大量的照片、图片、电影的剧照。我那四年就是通过这两本书里面的照片在想象世界电影在发生什么。那当然，我们有条件了，应该办一个电影节，让大家能够真的见面，看到这些新的电影，见到这些新的导演。啊，这是我，这个我做平遥电影展一个很很私人化的理由吧。嗯。I created the Pingyao Film International Film Festival eight years ago. My primary aim was to create a network for young filmmakers and young audiences to be able to meet.、Um, I wanted to also connect the Chinese filmmakers and filmmakers from Asia with that of the international scene and create a window for dialogue and networking.、Uh, cinema is a microcosm of a world, and it's quite unique. However, we cannot work in a silo. We can't close ourselves off from the world. We need to be able to exchange within our respective worlds, our respective countries. We need to be able to share perspectives. I wanted to create a sort of utopia、uh, where filmmakers could、um, network with each other and find synergy in that way. I am myself very grateful for film festivals in general. My first film festival was in Berlin, and it was the first time that I left China. The first time that I went to Europe, I was able to brush shoulders with the giants of the industry, as well as meet like-minded、uh, filmmakers、um, who were also in the same journey as myself. It. I wanted to create a pipeline, a platform where strangers could become friends and where things could start to happen. I myself remember studying at the Beijing、uh, Beijing Film Academy for four years for my undergrad, and、um, of course, it's a great school. And every day we would be watching film. However, we still had no conception of contemporary cinema until one day at the library, I encountered、uh, two magazines. One was a French magazine called Cahier du Cinéma, and then the other one was an English magazine called Sight and Sound.、Um, at the time, I did not know English. Nor French. However, I had pictures. I was able to peruse the still photography, and it's from that that I tried to、uh, garner insight on what contemporary filmmaking and films might be. And therefore, for Pingyao, it, it is my wish and personal、uh, selfish wish to create a community of like-minded filmmakers and networks. Thank you. I'll just say thanks also for your interpretation, which is stellar. <laughs> But Director Jia, I'm I'm also just really taken by the fact that international cinema meant so much to you when you were in China studying before you even left the country to go to the Berlin Film Festival for the first time, having learned from Fassbinder, having learned from Cahiers du Cinéma and Sight and Sound. And having that inform your own work as well, and then Raphael, I imagine for you,、uh, the global language of cinema, as you mentioned, became very important as well. That there is something that transcends borders and that unites filmmakers as artists, but I think also unites film audiences who are learning the same visual language.、Um, were there similar touchstones for you when you were studying as well?、Um, actually, it's super interesting because it's the、um, I've heard the director talk quite a quite a bit, 
and this is the first time I'm hearing about the the fast bender thing, which I, and I I adore fast bender and this is it's super and it, it makes so much sense with the especially with this earlier week the how he just produced it like really fast and just super free. Uh, he had a kind of a production line for yeah. art house filmmaking, which was amazing. Yeah, the two of you turned out to have a lot in common. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, obviously, director Joss' use of music. In, in in his cinema, I think I I try to take as much from from that as possible. He's a very musical person. Mm. He's always singing, whether in the car or even <laughs> while waiting for the food. Yes. <laughs> and he sings quite well. <laughs> There's a great new film from China where we see director Jia singing and. Um, called "Don't Worry, Be Happy," and if you ever get a chance, do not miss it. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think um, just the. I think you can you can learn a lot from a person by spending time in the editing room with them, and uh, watching the way that they cut, mm. like the it's kind of sort of like the rhythm of their artistry, and uh, I I don't know it's there's something very, uh, for lack of a better term, rock and roll about mm. the way that director Jack cuts. Mm -hmm. It's very intuitive. It's very like he doesn't care if uh, if. Classically, this makes sense, or that mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Very intuitive, and uh, I like to see it at that level. I, I, I really, really appreciate that, and I want to take inspiration from that. Mm. And how does your rhythm in your cutting compare to his? I mean, if he's rock and roll, what are you? <laughs> I try to, I try to be rock and roll, but the thing is, I guess. I'm I'm still uh, you know I'm a first time filmmaker, first time feature filmmaker. My I'm still very much. Um, I guess constrained by a sort of formalism, and uh, I guess in the, in in the in my film school, in the London Film School, we learned a lot through constraint. Like the first film that we made was black and white silent. Then second, they introduced color but no sound, still sound in post. And then so this this whole idea of constraints, and actually when uh, director Jao was on set, uh, set with me, and even throughout the um, the mentoring uh, period, he kept trying to push me to have more movement in my shots, to kind of break away from what I was comfortable with, to find, to explore, to experiment. He's like, Rafael, you're, you're still such a young filmmaker. Why are you trying to box yourself in a certain style? Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think slowly, I'm, I, 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 I think that his advice obviously 100% makes sense. And so, Lee, I'm trying to move more towards that. Oh, yeah, you're becoming a little bit more rock and roll. I hope so. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> um, we have some questions from our audience I want to share and, and get your responses as well. Uh, we've got a lot of students and emerging filmmakers here, I think, in the audience. And uh, they've submitted some questions for you. The first is from a student from Carleton University in Ottawa uh, who asks Director Ja, could you please let us know what the role of film theory was in your training and in helping you become a film director? Uh,我自己在北京电影学院学习的就是电影理论专业。呃,就是北京电影学院有很多专业,有导演,有摄影,有录音,有美术指导,有很多。那我当时选择电影理论，呃，其实对电影理论也不是太理解，但是，呃，它好考，因为考的人比较少，我就报考了。I myself majored in uh, film theory at the Beijing Film Academy. Of course, at a time there were several other disciplines such as directing, cinematography, cinematography, sound, and so on. But I chose film theory because it was easy to get in. Fewer applicants. <laughs> 但是我四年学习电影电影理论之后，特别是在工作之后，我特别感谢我学习的这个专业，因为它最少带给我两个重要的专业基础。第一个就是怎么看待电影，因为电影理论就是在研究什么是电影的，而这个问题是不管你从事
所谓电影的独特性是什么。However, after four years,、um, I discovered that it was actually a blessing in disguise、uh, for two reasons. The first one is it allowed me to develop a sophisticated and、uh, researched gaze on film as an industry and, and film, the media. It allowed me to、uh, systematically be able to study、uh, film and、uh, its specificities and its development. That film is what we look at as a way to study the world. 电影理论就在研究，从自从有电影以来，人们对于这个世界究竟有什么样的一个观察角度、思维的方法啊、呃？就我觉得，我觉得它有助于我们帮助形成我们自己看待这个世界的态度。<咳> uh, the study of film theory allows us to. Uh, develop several perspectives and help us understand the world, and thereby help us form our own perspectives and attitudes towards the world. Thank you. We have a question now for you, Raphael. This is from、uh, Amber Hugh. Given your background in philosophy、uh, and its influence on your filmmaking, how do you integrate philosophical concepts into your storytelling? I guess the the thing with uh, with uh, philosophical concepts is that it's it can be seen as like a, a depth in when、uh, whatever form it, it it takes itself into right. You have kind of like、uh, with like classical like written philosophy, which are come out in like articles or novels or you know, not novels, um, sorry, books on philosophy. I guess what I'm interested in is making this a bit more. Um, taking it from the conceptual, from the intellectual, and using images and sounds as well as maybe a narrative thread to to make it more accessible for audiences and to make it more、uh, like felt, like you know, like、uh, for example, someone like、uh, Albert Camus wrote a lot of like、uh, like scholarly articles or like books, like let's say the Myth of Sisyphus, where he talks very specifically about like a, a certain type of philosophy. But he also had fiction,、mm -hmm. in which he would、uh, incorporate、uh, all his thoughts and his learnings into something that's more digestible in a in a more enjoyable sense, I guess.、Mm -hmm. And so this intercutting of Of concepts and ideas with everyday life, or with with scenarios and things where they might be applicable in, is what I'm interested in doing with、uh, with cinema. Okay, from your study of philosophy, is there a philo philosophical tradition that you find most interesting or most useful for filmmaking for your filmmaking?、Hmm. I'm I'm very deeply influenced by、um, existential phenom phenomenology. Okay.、Uh, I also really like uh, uh, Hannah Arendt.、Mm -hmm. I love Hannah Arendt,、uh, Michel Foucault.、Mm -hmm. So yeah. You're interested in power then? Yes. Yes.、Okay. Yes. <laughs>、yeah. uh, we have another question from a student at Carleton University. This one's for both of you. How do you choose your collaborators, such as your directors of photography, your editors, and your actors? Either of you, is there something that that dra draws you to your collaborators? What? How do you choose them? Definitely to go back to this whole、um, this whole thing of、uh, rock and roll, right?、Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because my、uh, I guess my first love was music, and I, I was in a lot of bands.、Okay. And、um, growing up, there's nothing there's nothing to do in my my the community I grew up with, like in the suburbs of Manila. And so we would just my friends and I would meet up and and make music. But then this is something that I feel. Like I started to think about later on when I'm casting someone or I'm crewing up with someone, I guess the the first question I ask myself is would I make music with them at like two a.m. Okay. Because it's a it's a very intimate process and you、yeah. spend a lot of time with them. So. What do you play?、Uh, a bass guitar. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and for director Ja, is there something that draws you to your、mm. collaborators? How do you choose them? 呃，我的大部分合作者都呃都有共同特点，就是我们为同样的事情会
激动。就是我觉得它是让我们能够紧密的在一起的一个原因。我举一个具体的例子，<咳>我在一九九九一九九九六年的时候遇到了我的摄影师、摄影指导于立卫，我们一直合合作到现在。那个时候我是一个学生，他刚刚毕业，从法国留学回来。我们在一个短片展展认识之后，我们当时很偶然提到了布勒松导演。然后我们两个人谈了一晚上，我们都为这个导演激动。我觉得我们可以，可以在一起合作，因为我们，我们因为同一同一个导演、同一个作品、同一个事情，因为电影而激动，这是我们合作最主要的一个理由。他他可以，他可以代表很多，代表我们有相同的口味，呃，相同的对于电影的爱，啊、呃，很很多很多。How I choose my collaborators.、Um, there's one common criteria for me is that we have to be excited about the same things, and that's what's going to bring our our bonds together. For example, in 1996, I met I met my long-term collaborator, Mr. Yu Li Kui.、Uh, I've collaborated with him since、uh, for many years and on many projects. At the time, I was a student, and he had just come back from studying abroad in Paris, and we met to work on a short, and we talked about. Bresson、um, all night long, and okay. After that event, I decided we can work together, and we the rest was history.、Mm -hmm. That's another wonderful story. So Robert Bresson, the great French, French filmmaker, was what brought you to your collaborator、uh, Yuli Kwai. That's great.、Mm -hmm. um, Rafa, another question for you. This is from Li Sheng Yang. What do you consider the biggest hurdle when shifting from making short films to features? I wouldn't even say the scale.、Mm -hmm. I think with、um, short films, because the industry hasn't found a consistent way of、uh, monetizing and profiting from short films, that you have so much more freedom as a director.、Uh -huh. Whereas if you're, you know, you don't have to go through so many funding schemes, pass through too many gatekeepers to make a short film. You can make a short. I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about the feature, but. Still, it's like a, a longer span and all these things. But I guess with features, it's for me the biggest challenge from jumping from short to feature is really fighting to make sure that the that at the end of it you still love what you're you're making. I think I think that's what the what I see as the biggest challenge. Okay.、Um, question for director Jia from Libo He. Um, how do you approach balancing personal stories with broader social commentary in your work, and how is that perspective on those themes between the personal and the broader social commentary evolved over the years? These are good questions. 呃，我没有平衡，我相我坚信我的个体故事跟更多的人是会有共鸣的。因为我们都在经历同样的生活。<coughs> um, I'm not actively trying to balance the two. I'm not balancing. I strongly believe that there is universality in the themes that I'm treating, and because we all live the same life. Okay.、Um, question for、um, Raphael from Jini Wang. What do you think is the biggest commonality between you and director Jia in terms of your creative habits? I mean, he mentioned them already: the, the eating and the smoking. Eating and smoking. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean,、uh, like it's it's a it's a joke, but it's also it's it's you know it's I mean, it's it's a very real thing as well. Like、um, with the、um, with smoking, it's time to to think. <laughs> with with the food, I mean, if you can't enjoy food, why are you why are you even making films? No, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Get that on a T-shirt.、Um, they're both very social activities as well,、yeah. smoking and eating. And is the social element a big part of filmmaking for both of you? That's a yes. I, I yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Totally and for you, director Jia,、yeah. do you see、yeah. making films as a social activity as well? 
。是，他决定是。嗯，除了我们跟要跟要跟我们电影工业的人打交道，要跟投资商打交道，跟发行打交道，我们每拍一部电影要跟不同的行业、不同的地域、不同的人打交道。我觉得，作为一个导演，要对对人有热情，呃，要要要要就跟人打交道不不能成为你的一个负担，因为因为因为。因为因为电影电就是关于人的，呃，这个工作就是在跟人打交道。The answer is yes. I'm very social、um, because when we make a film, we need to interact with funders, with industry people, crew, cast, and so on and so forth. We need to、uh, we touch upon various sectors and people from all walks of life. Really, as a director, I believe you need to be warm.、Uh, socializing should not be cumbersome for you; otherwise, it may be quite tiring.、Uh, because film is about people. Thank you. I have just a couple of more、uh, questions before we we have to wrap up.、Um, do you watch films together? And if so, what are your conversations about the movies you you watch like? Don't you watch together? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're at a film festival. Maybe you'll have the chance. <laughs> we watch their film a lot together. No, because you're in the edit. <laughs> Yeah.、Uh, so、no, we haven't watched this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a new social activity for you.、Um, and then finally, the relationship began as a part of the Rolex、uh, mentor and protege initiative.、Uh, it's now lasted two years since you first began、uh, working together, talking together. Where do you see it going? What kind of relationship do you see? Two years from now, more years from now, what, how will you maintain what you've started? I guess coming from my side, it's so hard to to speak about the the future, right? Because I mean, I'm still even it just ended, and I'm still processing how much this uh, this uh, mentorship and how much director just affected me. I think it's gonna come out in、uh, and manifest itself in in my art for sure. Um, but I mean, to give a small example, for example, director Jia was so generous to invite me over to Pingyao again this year,、um, to to show a little bit of excerpts from Filipiniana,、mm. and this is something I'm super super grateful for because Pingyao to me was it's like it's such a special place in, in terms of how much the people from all over China travel to Pingyao because they love cinema,、mm. and so little things like this. And for you, Director Jia. Hmm. That, that, 正常的来说，未来肯定会越来越少见面的机会，这是一定的。Sad reality is that、um, we probably will see each other a lot less in the future. 嗯，但是他肯定一直在我的视线里。But I'll be keeping an eye on you. You're in my eyes, <laughs> line of sight. I'll be gazing adorably, adoringly from afar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that 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 I can imagine myself going. Oh, it's time to go to Toronto to watch、uh, Rafael's new film. Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> like the sound of that.、Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank both of you for taking the time to share some of your mentor and protege relationship. It's been really insightful to hear how that's worked and what it's meant for for both of you.、Um, I want to thank Judge Anke and Rafael Manuel for for joining us for this event. Big thanks also to Rolex for making their incredible support of the arts、uh, possible, and also for making today, today's event possible.、Um, before、um, we go, I just ask that you stay in your seats uh, while uh, Director John Raphael leave, and、uh, our front of house team will let you know when you can start exiting.、Um, but I just want to thank you for being here today, for、um, being a part of this、uh, wonderful conversation, and、uh, for also, I hope. Watching the films of、uh, Jajanka and the forthcoming Filipiniana from Rafael Manuel. Thank you all for coming. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.